everyone. Hi. How are we today? Hope we had a nice time during the coffee break. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're refreshed, relaxed, and we're ready to start. Beautiful. So today, what I want to talk about, how to secure your WordPress website from hackers so you can have peace of mind. How many of us here have experienced um, having a site hacked before? Maybe for your clients, for yourself, okay? Why screen of death? Pardon? Why the screen of death? Why the screen of death, okay. <laughs> well, in order to avoid stories that touch, um, it's usually very important to consider security from the onset. Not necessarily afterwards, because it's a bit more expensive when you consider it afterwards. But when you consider it at the beginning, it's um, relatively cheaper. You know, it's just like someone that wants to build a skyscraper, and uh, the person didn't know at the beginning that I wanted to build a skyscraper. I just felt, okay, I want to build a bungalow. And um, the foundation is for a bungalow. Can you imagine what will happen when it starts to build first floor, second floor, third floor? Do you think it will get to the fifth floor? I'm not sure. It will probably come down. Why? The foundation. And it will spend more. Because then he thought he was um, saving money by not doing the right foundation. But later on, he would have to spend much more because the money he spent would have been wasted. That one would have to come down and he has to start afresh. So today, um, it's my desire that we will learn how to get it right from the beginning. Because of our time constraints, I might not necessarily be able to go deep into, okay, you've already started. Well, part of what we're going to be doing would it also evolve for those that already have their own websites. What can you do? What can you incorporate? But right now, today, our main focus would be more if we're just starting afresh, what are the things to do? Because it's kind of like easier and cheaper when you're starting afresh as against when you now I start migrating from HTTP to HTTPS and things like that. Okay? Fantastic. So, you can protect your brand, you can prevent loss of sales, you can grow your business when you have a secure site that benefits your customers. And definitely, when your brand is protected, people know, like, and trust you, all this would help you to have a successful business. When you can make money, when um, people can visit your site and they feel that their information is secure, they feel that if I enter my credit card details, um, nobody's going to steal my credit card details to go and use it on another site, they will buy from you. But imagine if you have customers who don't trust you enough to use their card. What do you think will happen? Reduce sales, loss of income. Because if you can collect payments online, that means you have a huge possibility to get money from as many people as possible. You can have people from Tokyo, US, United Kingdom pay on your site. But what if all these people hundreds and thousands of people come to your site and they're like, uh, it's to be, mm, I enter my bank, <laughs> my card details, someone can easily get their other sites. Do you think they'll want to pay? So you might have invested in doing Facebook ads, Google ads, solo ads, paying for different things, and the conversion rate would not be high. Why? There's a loophole somewhere. You have not secured your site enough to make people trust you to put in their details, and that person will lose money. But if you can get it right, you'll be able to build a successful business. How many people here want to build a successful business? Lovely. So that's why you have to secure your site very well. So, let me tell you a little bit about what I do. I 
I'm an online business coach, um, among other things, and consultants. I help entrepreneurs to achieve their business goals by building secure and successful WordPress sites that gets people the results that they desire. You know you could use WordPress to build almost anything. So basically what I do is to help people get the solutions they desire by using WordPress. And part of it is ensuring that you have a secure website. It's very important. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking to you about how to secure a WordPress website from hackers. And I'm going to be showing you several things today. It's going to be um, like there's going to be some form of demonstration. So if we have our laptops and you want to follow along, maybe on your own site, perhaps you can. Okay. But we'll also be looking at what I'm going to do. So we're going to install an SSL certificate to protect the communication on your site. How many people here know what an SSL certificate is? Okay, fantastic. Okay, almost everyone. So it's a digital certificate that you can use to either validate and prove who you are. The SSL certificate can say, can confirm that indeed this person is who they say they are. Indeed, this organization is who they claim to be depending on the type of SSL certificate you get anyway. And another thing is it can help encrypt, protect the communication on your site. The HTTP that you see when you enter um, an address on the address bar, it means the information there is in clear text. But when you now see the S at the end, it means that it's relatively secure. The communication on that site is encrypted. So if there was someone, maybe an hacker, trying to snoop and um, check what's going on on the network, what data, what information is passing across the network, the person will not be able to see things like your password, things like uh, maybe credit card details, information that people are putting on that site. And it's very important nowadays to have an SSL certificate. Before, it was almost something you could take for granted. They will tell you, oh, it's good to have SSL certificate. Like, uh, I'm coming. Maybe you're thinking of the cost. I have to buy SSL certificate. Maybe like it's boss. You don't need it now, now. Uh -uh. But what are they doing on that site? We don't really need it now. We would put it later. When the time comes, we'll do it. And procrastination sets in. But now, if you visit a browser, um, like Chrome and I think Firefox, I think Chrome wants to do that um, from some months from now, but Firefox, you visit, they'll start telling you this site is not secure. That's not helping your brand. So I don't know if you have a website right now and it doesn't have HTTPS. If people visit your site, depending on the browser, can you imagine if Google is telling them this site you are going to is not secure? In short, they, they, they will not even wonder if they are about to do anything sensitive. Like, it's not secure, I don't want to come here. Who would like that for their brand? Nobody. Okay? So, um, quickly, I would love to show us how to install an SSL certificate. So, I think. As I'm talking, I'll be doing the practicals, and depending on the time, um, I'm just brush over the rest. But that way, you'd also have lent it without seeing how it is. Let me proceed. Okay, how is that? Fine. Beautiful. So another thing I'm going to be showing you is how to update plugins and teams so that you can avoid attacks for vulnerabilities in outdated editions. So people are like, ah, should I update? Why? What's the benefit of updating? Now, if you don't update and you're using outdated versions, there might be vulnerabilities, loopholes that are widely known and the authors would have created new ones, updated ones, so that you could utilize the ones that have the um, vulnerabilities fixed and patched. But if you were to say, 
no, I don't have that time, I'll do it later, you procrastinate, or you don't know the right way to get it done, then you'll miss out, okay? But today we're going to see how to update, and sometimes it's just that they don't know how to do it. So like, okay, let me call my developer, developer, please come and help me. And he says, um, you're going to pay 30000 I'm like, 30000 Okay, I'm coming. Then you procrastinate. Well, if you know how to do it, then you could get to save some money. So the whole essence of our training today is for you to learn how to save some money, it's for you to learn how to secure your site, how to protect your brand, and how to make some money. Because if your site is secure, and people can get to know, like, and trust you enough to buy from your site, you'll be able to make some money. And if you're a website designer too, you would also be able to make some money by helping people to secure the site. So those are some of the things we're going to be looking at. Uh, how to utilize security plugins to easily secure your site. And um, today, we are going to be looking at those I believe will get value from what I have to say today. Okay, so how many of us here are business owners? Can I? Okay, great. How many of us here own our own WordPress websites? Okay, how many of us here are? Um, <laughs> okay, how many of us here are maybe designers or developers? Okay, okay, great. So, quite a number of us are entrepreneurs. Maybe we own our own website, or we have something to do with security in one way or the other. It affects us. Either maybe you are a staff of an organization, and you're part of the IT team responsible for handling that um, website. So, I guess from what I could see, although our hands are like this, like this, so I was not too sure, but I think quite a number of us own our own businesses, right? Yes. Quite a number of us here to our developers and designers, right? Yes. Okay, love you. So, you will find this training today useful if you are a business person that wants to grow um, this business and increase sales. Anybody here want to grow their business? Or increase sales? Make more money? Okay, so you'll find this training useful. If you're an entrepreneur that you want that want to grow um, this brand and sustain it, is there anybody here that would love to grow their brand and sustain it? Okay, fantastic. So you'll find today's training useful. Is there anyone here that would love to build highly secure sites? Yes. Okay, then you'll find today's training useful. So let's look at the typical problems that people tend to have and why this topic is important. I mentioned earlier that people will be afraid to shop when um, the browser is telling them this site is not secure. If you were to visit a website and you're being told this site is not secure, what would you do? So people will be afraid of being able to at least ask one or two people. If they are saying not secure, then they'll probably say maybe I shouldn't proceed. Or, well, if I don't need to impute any details, maybe I just need to read the information that perhaps I should uh, just proceed. But that's because it's a bit of a techie. At least it knows technology a little bit. Some people probably say, no, I don't want to go there. I don't know maybe to download virus on my site. They won't even go there. People are giving, um, they're not in agreement. So some people will not even venture any further. That's websites that I invested in and you paid 100,000 plus in Naira, or maybe 1,000 plus in dollars to get someone to build for you, but maybe a developer said, okay, as an add-on, pay this amount of money for security enhancement. I said, no, uh -uh, it's too much now. Who knows me? Who is going to attack my site? Nobody's going to attack my website. Don't worry, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. You know, like that sometimes you know they advise and like nah out of the whole world who knows my website I will do it later nobody 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 wants to attack my site I don't really have anything of importance on my site that they want to steal from you don't have to wait till that time okay so another thing problem could be that you lose sales during um, a product launch because your site was taken down by your hosting provider for sending spam. Most times when people's sites get hacked, 
um, part of what is being used for is that maybe they'll begin to send out spam mails and their hosting provider will shut down that site in order to reduce um, the level of attack, to reduce the impact. Because once a server begins to send out um, spam, the IP address can get blacklisted. And once the IP address gets blacklisted, and most times a hosting provider probably give you email service and web service on the same server. That means when people need to send out emails, their mails will begin to bounce because the IP address of that server have been listed on major IP blacklist sites. By the way, I have some background in hosting. My um, company is into hosting uh, website design among other things. So I have an understanding of how some of these things run. Yeah. So definitely, by the time you begin to send out spam, you need to shut it down. You need to try to reduce the impact. Now imagine, and this is actually a real life story. I know of two people. There was someone that was about to launch. She was really making them campaigns. Okay, um, this product, I'm selling it. And unfortunately, a site went offline during that time. It was attacked. There was a malware attack and um, the hosting provider had to shut down her account temporarily until she could sort it out, clean it up, then it could be back up. And the painful part of it, hmm, ouch, you know, you, sometimes it look like it's that you're saving money, um, you look at it that add-ons, subdomains, and you say, oh, I bought this hosting package, and you put as many websites as possible. Now that's not a crime, it's a good thing, yeah, you're saving money, but then when something like this happens, you spend more. That means if you had like five websites on that hosting account, and that particular hosting account gets shut down, what will happen? All five will go down. So that was what happened for this lady. She was really promoting, she was about to launch something, and unfortunately, during that time, um, she had, our site was attacked. So all of our websites were down. So you couldn't even say, oh, let me go to another website and use your contact form to say that, um, sorry, I can't reach you. You have been promoting this thing on social media and I really want to sign up for your academy. So that was really painful. She did lose some money during the product launch because not everybody will have that patient to come back. They'll move on. Life happens. How many times do you want to actually buy something and um, for some reason something comes up, you forget, you move on, you're like, okay, I'll do it later. And you never get around to doing it. Let me tell you another story. There was someone that was um, doing a product launch. It was supposed to do an course. It was supposed to do a course and uh, it was announcing on social media, okay, book marketing, and so many things like that. And unfortunately, towards the time it was supposed to launch its course, the website went down. It was really tiring. During that period, um, I think I had one or two people that asked for a refund, especially maybe if they were not really even interested in the course, or maybe they, I guess most times it's usually people that are not really so much interested in the course, maybe they have not really made up their mind, they are still fickle and minded and all that. And uh, the person asked back for the reform, okay, give me back my money. Um, just because there was like one or two day delay, because he also had to sort out his website, and uh, the delivery might have been done by the site. But generally, when you have something as important as that, you need to sort it out. He was tired, he was stressed up, and now had people saying, kindly give me a refund. You have not started. You promised you are going to start on so so day. You have not started. Look at what happened. He lost some money. Why? Because the site got hacked. So it's my desire that as much as possible, we will learn what to do to reduce the possibilities of having our site getting hacked. That does not mean that your site will never get hacked. Because there's only so much I can uh, teach during this training within our limited time. But I believe that the things I'm going to teach you will at least help you to an extent. 
to help reduce the possibilities of getting hurt. If you have questions, um, you could ask. There will be a session for question and answer towards the end. Okay. So, if you're not tech savvy and your IT personnel wants to charge you a fortune, you definitely find this useful. Maybe you'll be saying you don't want to secure your site yet because they said, okay, pay me 50000 and you're like, 50000 Naira. Try and have that right now. Or even maybe they said, pay 15000 and you're like, I'm still trying to come back next week. Well, 15000 Naira is not a fortune, but I guess it's relative. But basically, if you know the basic things to do, then you'll be able to save yourself some money. And you save yourself the money of having the person fix it at the beginning, and you save yourself of some money of having it um, be fixed if your site were to be hacked, because that can be very annoying. And people can charge you almost any amount of money when your site is down. You need their help. Yes. If you know how to get it done, go do it yourself. And the truth is, not everybody that knows how to clean a, a, a hacked site. Because the whole idea of um, cleaning a hack site is to ensure that you don't get hacked again as much as possible. Otherwise, you keep losing money, you keep losing time, you keep losing customers. No, well, I don't think any of us want to do that, do we? No. Yeah. So that's why we're here today. So, and lastly, if you're not sure of the best practices to securing a site, um, <coughs> you gain some value from what we have to talk about today. So quickly, um, opportunities that you have from this training is to learn how to protect your brand, avoid loss of income through your business by building successful and secure sites, either for yourself or for your clients. Now, when you have a secure site, you're able to build trust with your customers. I mentioned that by the fact that they can see that padlock sign, that helps them, the HTTPS. The fact that the browser is not telling them the site is not secure, it makes their heart at least at rest. And um, they'll be able to proceed to do whatever activities they plan on doing on your site. Another thing is it saves you time and money. He told us the story of how they spent months trying to get their site back online. That's a long time. So you get to save yourself time, you get to save yourself some money when you get it right at the onset. Um, you can also get to use this to grow your business, apart from the fact that I said when your site is secure, people need to trust you enough to buy from your site. Um, as a designer and a developer, you might be able to just get a maintenance contract with your customers. With the knowledge you have, you can enlighten them, let them know where they stand to lose. If you don't know what they start to lose, then having a contract, maybe depending on the package, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, maybe a maintenance package, whether per month or per year, um, you could let them see that they're actually saving money. Because if someone were to lose 3 million naira or 10 million naira during a product launch because their site breaks down for um, being hacked, if they had just spent 50,000 Naira or 100,000 Naira, wouldn't it have paid them? Why you deduct that amount from the amount they could have gained? That means they have lost a lot. So if you could sensitize maybe your business partners, you could sensitize your customers, then you would also be able to make some money from it. If you're a developer and you want to be able to charge money for the security. So, let us uh, just quickly look at some steps that you can use to secure your website and ensure that you have peace of mind so that you can sleep well. First of all, install an SSL certificate. You can choose to either buy or you can utilize free SSL certificates. So there are some um, hosting companies that actually give out free SSL certificates, like my organization does that. Um, there are some site organizations, some hosting companies that would give you maybe a letter of credit, so that that way you get to save some money and um, you don't have to pay for SSL certificates. But if you still desire to buy, maybe because of warranty, um, perhaps if something were to actually happen, it's not like 
so many people follow up on that, or maybe that's really impossible. If you just want the idea of warranty, yeah, you could go by. Or you want uh, maybe an extended, validated SSL certificate, the one that will actually show you that this company itself is uh, who they claim to be. Because a site can have um, SSL certificates, but it can be used for tricking people into giving their credentials. Maybe they are pretending to be GTB. If you observe, if you go to GTB's website, I think I'm going to use the browser. I'm connected to the internet. There are some sites you go to, you actually see the name of the organization yeah. at the address bar. They are paying quite some amount of money yeah. in order to get that kind of certificate. So um, there are different levels of certificates, different types. They're all secure. But depending on um, if you want to go the extra mile, you could pay for one. So one minute. PLC. At least if you were to go here, yeah, the Nigerian one. If you were to go here, you 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 feel rest assured that oh okay, this is who they say they are. So it's not just about having the HTTPS. Remember, I told you you can use it for validation, and you can also use it for encryption. So even though you can have a site that is encrypted, you might be going to the fake sites. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. Um, this tells us that indeed it has been verified by this organization and they are who they claim to be. So I just want to log in here. I want to do some practical sessions. Yeah. And please don't forget, whatever aha moment you're having, whatever things you're learning, don't forget to tweet at WC Lagos 2018. So that let people know you're having fun. Let people know that you are learning something new and let people get to learn from you. Okay? Yes. Thank you. So what I'm going to do, I'll just quickly create a subdomain. I'm going to be creating a WordPress site here. Because I want us to see the process, let it be practical. I know most times when things are practical, um, people tend to remember more. Yeah. So hopefully that's the desire that you leave here with better understanding. Now, um, so I'm going to be creating a WordPress website on this subdomain called wordcamp.katrinagwali.com. Right now, I want to show us how to install an SSL certificate using the Let's Encrypt certificate that is available um, on my hosting plan. Please ensure you note down your questions. Perhaps you could either write it down and you could help me give it to him, he could pass it over to me, or you just write it down and um, during the question and answer time, you're able to ask it. Who knows, perhaps I might even have answered it before the question and answer period, but notwithstanding. Oops. So, um, I've gotten to the Let's Encrypt Certificate part. They issue out free SSL. So, I'll still delete some of these things there yeah, more for so it's as simple as that. I just selected the domain name, I'm here, and um, just click issue. Now the thing is, the DNS has to be right, otherwise there, there are going to be errors. Um, basically, the records have to face to that particular server if you're going to be doing it here, and the domain name is elsewhere, then there should be something that says, okay, this domain name will be hosted on this particular site and it's pointing to that server. As long as the DNS records, that information is okay, you'll be able to successfully install it. So, how many minutes did we use? Everyone, are there about? Yeah. I'm done? Yeah. I've already installed it. The SSL certificate is installed very quickly, so easily. So that's if 
uh, maybe you're using let's say print certificates on your hosting plan the one being given to you by your hosting provider otherwise you could always buy and if you need help um, you can either contact the support of your hosting provider to kind of assist you or if you know how to do it you could just go ahead to do it by yourself so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be installing WordPress so let's come here and um, so I told us that we can either buy some organization sell, like sweet and sells, um, like um, I think go get SSL. Um, there are so many other organizations that actually sell um, SSL certificates. So you could either buy from them or you can utilize the free SSL certificate that we given to you. Okay, so because of the time left, I will just rush quickly over it. I will just show us how to install WordPress. Let me see. So some providers enable you to some providers enable you to automatically install WordPress. They give you like an auto installer. So it makes it easy for you to install WordPress. Uh, well, um, you can download from WordPress.org to manually install or you can use an auto installer. So right now I'm going to be using an auto installer. Oh, I'll just show you the process. Install now. The reason why I chose to install my SSL certificate before is that it really makes it easy. That means when you're installing your um, WordPress, you will just install using HTTPS because it can be, it takes more time if you have to start migrating from HTTP to HTTPS and you need to get it right. But if you get the foundation right from the onset, it really helps you. All I just have to do is already selected because it's an option. But if you desire to use HTTP, it's still there. Or HTTPS, you just use this and you install. If you want to install in a directory, you put maybe whatever name of the directory here. But I don't want to install in any directory, so I'm not going to use this. So let's um, just move over. Do we all understand? Yes. Okay. Let's just move over. Um, so install or update WordPress core. Ensure that um, you install WordPress from the actual sites. Well, Softaculous will definitely install um, the correct one. If you, your hosting provider provides an auto installer, you could use that. Or you could download from WordPress.org. Now, when I'm talking about update WordPress core, most times they're usually updates, maybe because they're trying to um, security patches or improvements, enhancements. And um, just like you have operating system, there was a time we had XP, Vista, 7, like that, yeah. So there's always improvement. So you need to update, otherwise, hackers can attack your site. They tend to begin to, they use bots, um, automated machines to search for versions that have vulnerabilities that have been openly declared and have been patched. And that's why they have updated versions for you to migrate to, or rather update to. So if you don't update, and those vulnerabilities are well known, all they just have to do, the attackers will just begin to search for um, WordPress versions that have maybe lower um, versions with known vulnerabilities, and they will not attack based on those vulnerabilities. So that's one of the reasons why you need to update. Then avoid using um, default values. Don't use the default um, WordPress table prefix, WP. You can change it to yourself when you're installing um, your WordPress site. Why? Because if they were to do some SQL injection code and they are trying to just guess, they are inserting some codes into your database and they are using the default format because there are some specific table names. So if you're using the default prefix and they guess it right, then that means that they can't just impute anything into your database, which will not be good for your website. So avoid using default values, and that also includes using admin. Please do not use admin. You can create any name, okay? Don't use admin. It makes it easy for them to 
hack your site because they already know the username. Then all they just have to start doing is guess the password, brute force attack. Now, you secure passwords, you can make your password like 12, 12 characters, mixtures of alphabets, numbers, symbols, um, avoid dictionary words. You can even use your language if that will make you remember. So if you're Igbo and you feel like using Chineke, well, yeah, maybe Chineke is God. That's Igbo and yeah, you mix it. Or for example, Chineke, you capital C, H, instead of I, you use one, you know? So instead of A, you use art. Words that will make you easily remember your password. Because if you write it down, some might say it, and so many things like that. So you keep your things and plugins up to date. Um, ideally, don't update directly on your site. I know if you're not a techie, it might just be easy for you to do that. Even if you want to do that, the quickest way and easiest way for you to do that is to ensure you backup first. So use a backup plugin to um, do a backup so that if anything were to happen, you can roll back to your backup, okay? So that makes it easy for you. And this is how to update. We can see updates now. WordPress will just tell you update now. Okay, so I think we'll be wrapping up from here or thereabouts. Be careful where you do your downloads from. Don't look for node teams. You think you're saving money when your site gets hacked, you know that you're not saving money. If it's just to buy, look for free teams from WordPress um, repository. You could always get good free teams or invest. It's an investment to your business. You want to get money from it, so do that investment. You can buy from Team Forest and some other places. We moved on use teams, plugins, and WordPress versions. Maybe you installed WordPress in another folder, you forgot about it, you can be hacked through it. You have plugins or teams you're no longer using, you want to test different teams and plugins before you can actually set it on one. Even if you have deactivated it, you can still get hacked from it, so just delete them. You don't need it, delete them. It helps with security. Um, remember, if you're going to use a password that can easily be guessed, maybe you used your domain name as a username or you used admin, you have some bots that would be guessing your password. So you can protect your site by having things in place that can um, blacklist the IP address of the person trying to get your password if they try. I mean, it's, the person is more likely it's not a human being. But even if it's worse, then <laughs> they should hold on. They get they are suspended for uh, maybe a certain number of hours or days before they can be tried. Stay up to date with security news. When you install the WordPress plugin, which is very good for security, please install it. Um, ensure you subscribe. You'll be able to get up to date news. Access rights, let it be on a need-to-know basis. You don't have to give everybody the admin rights. If they don't need it, don't give them. Even if you have an admin account, you can choose to have a separate admin account for administrative purposes and have another account that you just be using for um, updating posts and things like that. So um, that's all. If you want an e-book pertaining to this, um, you can send me an email, design at supertech.com and I'll get to send it to you because there's only so much we can cover during this period. Yeah. Okay. Question and answer, I don't know if there's time for it, but if there is, we'll do that. So you can connect with me by this means. Thank you.